and thanks for joining us on the newsroom. I am Oni Adekunle. As part of measures to ensure security during the Eid prayer marking the Salah celebration, the police in Borno State have announced the restriction of vehicular movement in Maiduguri, the state capital. A statement signed by the spokesman of the command, Edit Okon, said the measure was among others taken to ensure the safety of residents. While calling for maximum cooperation, the statement advised the people to be vigilant, report any suspicious persons, activities or objects to the police and other security agencies. And over 70 women abducted by bandits in Malele community in Zamfara State have been released. The women were abducted on June 7. The police public relations officer in the state, Mohamed Shehu, confirmed the release said the victims are on their way to the state capital. He said the command will provide more details on the development later. And no fewer than 30 people have died with, 30, with more than 2,000 hospitalized in the past two months in the cholera outbreak ravaging Jigal state. Permanent Secretary of the Jigawa State Ministry of Health, Salisu Muhazu, who confirmed the outbreak, said that most of the infected cases were children recorded in nine local government areas of the state. The Permanent Secretary, who could not immediately give the cause of the outbreak, alleged that there was possibility of water contamination from an area where people practiced open defecation near the water vendors who collect and circulate the water to residents of Adegia Town, one of the most affected communities. And health facilities in Malawi, or Malawi have run out of doses of COVID-19 vaccines due to delays in vaccine treatment as hundreds are due to receive a second shot. The country's health ministry said the next batch had been delayed due to the recent surge in coronavirus cases in India, which is the world's main AstraZeneca supplier, which forced the country to temporarily halt all major vaccine exports to meet local demand. Hundreds of people seeking to get vaccinated were turned away from Malawi's main Kamuzu Central Hospital in the capital this week. Just over 380,600 people in Malawi have received the first shot of the COVID-19 vaccine with more than 33,200 uh, are now fully vaccinated. The Kebi state government says it has secured 1.7 billion Naira loan as part of efforts to improve livestock production and other forms of animal husbandry in the state. Governor Atiku Bagudu said this at a continuing Fulani Stakeholders Peace, Security and Unity meeting in Burning Kebi, the state capital. He said the aim of the meeting is to review the progress made and tackle the challenges with a view to preferring plausible solution. Bagudu reviews that his government has set up a steering committee to look into grazing reserves, cattle roads and to resolve of lingering contentious issues among farmers and Fulani headsmen so as to engender lasting peace and security in the state. And on the foreign scene, Jacob Zuma's long-running corruption trial will resume on August 10. A South African judge ruled on Tuesday after the ex-president sought to have the case postponed because of the COVID-19 pandemic and the recent unrest in the country. The other marks a victory for the legal team of Zuma, who is serving a 15-month jail term for contempt of court on an unrelated matter. Following his jailing, South Africa was plunged into chaos, with looting and rioting erupting in Zuma's home region of KwaZulu-Natal before spreading to Johannesburg. The 79-year-old faces 16 charges of fraud, graft, and racketeering related to the 1999 purchase of fighter jets, patrol boats, and equipment from five European arms firms when he was deputy president. And with draws for the preliminary round of matches for the 2021-2022 CAF Champions League and Confederation Cup less than a month away, clubs in the Nigeria Professional Football League are faced with a heavy fixture schedule. At the end of its executive committee meeting last Friday, CAF said the draws for both competitions will be held latest August 15. And with Nigeria needing to present representatives for both competitions, NPFL clubs will have to play more than two matches per week to meet up. And that's the latest update on the newsroom at this time. Please join us again at the top of the hour for more. Thank you for watching.